Orbit XP is our free connector for X-Plane 11 using Zebo 737. Now this is a free connector which you're going to be able to download and use with all of your Sysmo hardware because all our plug and fly modules are compatible and it doesn't matter if you have the full module or only partially, it will work correctly. So today I'm going to show you how to install and I'm going to show you some of the features of Orbit XP. So starting from the home page, we'll head to downloads and from here you'll see a number of options, Orbit XP, and we need to download the RAR file which contains everything we need. While that's downloading I'll tell you a little bit more about the requirements that we have for Orbit XP. It needs to be a 64-bit operating system, Windows 10. Uh, you will need X-Plane 11.5 or higher and the version of the Zebo flight model 3.43 dot 18 or more recent. Uh, the X-Plane API must also be 3.0 or higher and you need to install this on a computer which contains X-Plane. And lastly, no third-party add-ons are required, so it's just Orbit XP. Now we have downloaded the RAR file on our computer, we need to double-click and use a program like WinRAR to access the file and decompress them. I want to use the Orbit XP setup uh, wizard, so I'll double-click on that and it opens the installer. I'm going to follow the steps. Uh, here you can change the path you want, where you want to save the file. I'm going to leave it the same, but copy the path so I can access it easily later. Hit next, and next again. Now we allow the installer to do its job, and now we can hit close, and we've also finished with WinRAR, so we'll close that window. Uh, here I'm going to insert the path of the file, but if you didn't copy it as I did in the previous step, then you can use the graphical user interface to find the Orbit XP folder, which we see here. Before I get into network configuration, I'm just going to show you where we install the Orbit plugin. This plugin will allow us to launch Orbit XP directly from the X plane. So as you see, I've already installed it, and I've created a direct access to the folder with all the X plane files. So I'm just going to copy this and put it inside the resources and then plugins folder of Xplane. We just copy paste it there and that's it. We don't need to do any installation procedure. That's all done. Regarding network configuration, I'll do a short tutorial now, although there are other more extensive videos which I recommend you check out and I'll leave in the description. The first thing you need to know is that all of our modules have IP addresses and you need to set up a local area network. So each, I, each module has an IP address and I am using an aft overhead for this test and this is the IP address by default of the aft overhead. So if I type this into any browser, I'm using Google Chrome, this should take you to the config page. Now that's not going to work and I'm going to show you why. If we open the command tab of Windows, which you access by hitting CMD, command prompt, and type the command ipconfig, he will see the IP addresses that I'm using, and I'll see that the IPv4 address is actually range 10. Now, if the range is different from this range here, we won't be able to access this board. So in order to fix this, I need to go to the network uh, configuration, which I can quickly access by typing in the search box ncpa.cpl. Now I need to open the network which is about Ethernet. This is the board, the AF that I've connected. And hit properties inside the Internet Protocol version 4, which is up for a local IP address. I'll hit properties and I want to change the IP address to the same range as the aft overhead, which again is the number there. Hit OK. Close. And now I should be able to access this configuration page. Here we are. So this should be the configuration by default. You have the IP address and the host port. Don't change those numbers. The only number you might need to change is the host IP, this number here, which is the IP address of your computer. And you find that, again, this is the number we put. It's this number. 
Okay. So with all of that done, now we can open orbit. So I'll just close this. And launch orbit. So as we see, it's scanning for the SIM cards, but it hasn't found them. If it found them, they would appear here. Let's look at the log. And here we have something interesting. So it's scanned through all the IP address, found an IP address at 155, but it's saying there's not a module connected. OK. So what I'm going to do is look at the firewall. Usually when you open Orbit for the first time, there will be a message asking if you accept the inbound rules and outbound rules for Orbit XP. Here we see that they don't have the green tick, or you might see a red tick. And I'm just going to enable these. Once that's done, automatically it appears. I've created a shortcut for Orbit XP on the desktop and also a shortcut to the folder which contains all the files just for ease of access. Let's double click on Orbit and I'm going to show you around the interface of Orbit XP. In the light blue section, if we click on the gears icon, I can access the config page, which has the IP address of the boards, the IP address of the computer it's listening to, the host port, and all the daughter boards which are connected. Here you'll be able to access all the, all the plug and fly modules that you have connected at the time. I only have the aft, so that's all we can see. The same goes for this section down here. With each module that would be connected, you would have the option to select the line. So Alpha, Brava, Charlie, Echo, Delta, and also the version of our products. It's important you get this right, otherwise it will not work correctly. Inside, when I click on the SIM card or on the servo button, we'll see that this blue eye appears and we can click on this to access the hardware testing tool. The main features of this are the all outputs on, all displays on button, and we can use this to test if the hardware is working. It works very similarly to SC Pascal, and if you need uh, more guidance on how to do that, there's a video which I'll leave in the description. These are analog inputs, and the digital inputs are also here. We're now going to take a look at another frequent configuration issue which we can easily solve. Say that we have a different version of the aft overhead we want to install, say I have version 2. Click the Save button and access to the path is denied. Okay, this is probably because I don't have the necessary permissions to read and write inside this Windows folder. So I'm gonna come back to our program files and click on the Sysmo folder, right click, properties, the security tab, and I want to edit the permissions. Now in here I select the user, which is, this is the current user I'm, I'm in at the moment, and I'm going to allow full control, okay. OK, and now this should allow me to save. So that's working correctly. Now I have access to all the files inside this folder, and full permissions I mean. I can also access the config file directly. Now you usually won't have to do this. The only, the only reason you might want to do that is if you have very old equipment and you want to use, and they which use dis different types of encoder. That's the only real reason you have to access. Otherwise, everything can be done from this part of the window here, which is flights in modules. OK, now we're going to look into gauge configuration. So for that, we're going to open Orbit XP. For this section, you'll see that I've connected a main instrument panel. And we'll need to click on the servo's daughter board by hitting the eye icon or double click. And this will open the servo's window. Uh, here, you'll see that uh, just by activating the servos there, now I can hear the servo moving. And I'll only be able to configure the gauges which have been implemented in Orbit XP. Now, those are easily noticeable because they have a picture here. If they don't have a picture, they won't be able to be configured. So let's go back to the flaps gauge, which is the only one which is currently installed on the main instrument panel. And what I need to do is match the physical position of the switch to the one which is inside the picture. So in the case of my current gauge, the position is right there. And then I click on the blue arrow and we'll move through the different positions. This has to be done uniquely for every module because every servo is different, otherwise we would do it for you. Once that's done, this will be saved to the config file and you won't need to uh, set this again.